What's up guys, today we have another blue belt smash. Kai was kind enough to sacrifice himself for your education. Thank you, Kai. As per usual, I start on my butt so I can reach grips easier and then I take four points of contact. I try to bear and bolo Kai and look at this little knee adjustment Kai does to make his hips go further away from me. Kai is in the triangle danger zone by having one arm between my legs and one arm out. He does a great job defending by changing his angle. This makes it difficult for me to lock up completely. I only have the tip of my foot. Triangles can be a risky submission as their escape often leads to a guard pass. I switch to the arm bar and I generally recommend against switching to the arm bar from the triangle if it's fully locked up. However, it wasn't fully locked up and it was the right call. On the bottom, you generally don't want to have your hips pointing away from your opponent, although I don't mind the risk against a blue belt, and doing this from here can be a good way to lift them up with your butterfly hook. I land in kind of a weird position where Kai might be able to take my back, so I do a front roll to hide my back onto the mat. Because Kai's legs in the middle of mine, the knee bar is there for me. To finish a knee bar, I highly recommend this Renegade Choke Style grip rather than two hands on the heel, because it keeps their leg glued to your chest and it controls the foot to stop it from turning and escaping. I use shin on shin all the time to transition to X guard or single leg X. That was my intention, but Kai's neck is there for me. I lock up the front headlock and want the arm in guillotine, but Kai's right leg is in the way. It's really hard to guillotine someone that still has a guard. Kai comes up on top and now I'm looking to position my legs better. Ideally, I'd like to get my left leg over Kai's back. My legs right now won't stop Kai from rolling to his back. Not that it's a big deal because I end up in the inverted front headlock anyways. I transition to the Dars and Kai makes a big error. Before moving on, I want you to comment what that error is. He was on his back, relatively safe from the Dars, and he comes up to his side, making it much easier for me to lock up. It's much harder to Dars people when they're on their back or belly down. It's way easier when they're on their side. All I could get is this modified grip. I have relatively short and stocky arms. Not the ideal arms for Darses, but I'm very successful with them because I understand how they work. In my opinion, they're the most misunderstood submission in Jiu Jitsu. Back to shin on shin to get X guard. I need Kai's leg closer to me, so I pull it to me. I want his right foot beside my hip, so I pull it further as I take my leg out. Now putting my left foot by his hip for X guard. My left hand has an overhook on Kai, which is fine, it's not bad, but an underhook is better. It'll be hard to get my arm underneath Kai's leg with all his weight on it, so I pull Kai by the wrist to take his weight off his leg. I want to get a cool highlight reel X guard sweep on Kai, but he denies me the opportunity by falling back for a leg lock. I'm pretty decent at leg locks, but I'm not like a leg lock guy. Sometime I will do a leg lock heavy video though. Like always, to win the scramble, you need to prioritize getting your hips higher than your opponent's hips. I loop my hand through Kai's wrist to establish upper body control. It's a lot harder to put in your bottom hook rather than your top hook, so look how I pull Kai over my body so my bottom hook becomes my top hook. I generally prefer the underside when attacking the back because it has more submission options and it's easier to trap your opponent's arms with your hooks. And that's what I'm doing now, I'm using the straight jacket system where you trap their top arm with your bottom arm and their bottom arm with your top arm. And now you can use your top hook to trap their top arm and feed their bottom arm to your bottom arm so both their grips are trapped. It's an unfair fight now, it's your hand against their nothing. Kai does a great job defending though by getting his hips off the center line. I start to lose it so I figure, okay, I'll finish with an arm bar. Someone told me I do too many arm bars in the videos and I'm actively trying to give you guys variety. It's just tough to give variety while also going path of least resistance. I start to let Kai work a little bit. He puts me on my back where it'd be easier for him to pass rather than me on my butt. He does a decent job with the double underpass but I know he needs to transition to upper body control to establish side control. So I frame with my arm to keep him far away from my head. This this is a cheeky little move I do, kind of like a hip throw, but Kai holds on with a body lock and now we're in this weird position. And let's just take a moment to admire my thighs. This is almost like a reverse body lock, Kai needs to bring his left arm behind my back, but as he tries, I come up on top into headquarters. I can tell Kai wants to invert underneath me, probably for a kiss of the dragon back take, so I control the leg that he needs to swing underneath me and then I backstep out of his guard. I am in a position now where I could go for a rolling back attack, but it might be risky. I'm just assessing the situation and rolling on camera is getting a little harder in one sense only because I'm thinking about what I'm going to teach you guys as I roll. I think about what I'm going to say as it's happening and it's a little distracting to be honest. This is a great example of why bringing your back to the mat counters the darts. Look how my arm becomes more shallow as Kai brings his back to the mat, putting his shoulder further away from me in the process. 
I just let go of it and try something else. I always have options. I try to stable Kai's arm, but he does a great job defending. I have his left arm jacked up high, and as I transition to mounts, I want to keep it there where it's vulnerable. I have Kai's arm separated from his body, so I shoot my left knee up high and put my foot on his bicep. I call this a pit stop, and it can just help you so you don't have to rely on leg dexterity to get your leg in position over the shoulder when shooting for triangles. A mounted triangle is probably the worst position you can be in in jiu-jitsu and even worse in MMA. <laughs> I've been trying out new playlists and a slow song came on so I had to change it real quick. I'm not exactly sure what happened here, but I had to put it in slow-mo. My physiotherapist told me basically all my ligaments and my ankles are torn, so yeah, that's great. Again, not always a great idea to intentionally turn your hips away from someone in your guard, but look at this quick guard retention as Kai backsteps. I catch his back step with my butterfly hook and snatch up Kai's neck because he's leading too much with his head. The only problem is I don't have much of a guard so I lift him up with my butterfly hook. I think about the darts again but his back is already on the mat. I enjoy being dynamic and not forcing submissions or positions and I'm just seeing what Kai gives me. Let's all look at Kai's right arm as he sets up his escape. This is a very Marcelo Garcia type escape where he frames on the tricep with his hand and directs my body weight off of him. I try to counter with an arm bar but end up on my butt. If Kai was stronger or a better wrestler, I'd be very vulnerable to being wrestled down from here. I end up in top half guard but Kai has the underhook which is very bad for me so I backstep into this common and effective honey hole entry but I'm too loose and it ends up being more of a scramble. No big deal though, I'll just take his neck again. Kai needs to work on not leaving his neck out there and instead of the darts, this time I go for the anaconda. I'm trying to use my legs to push Kai's arm more across his body for a tighter choke but no luck. Now he gets his hand on the side of his head which definitely makes it harder for me to finish but it's not enough and I get the job done. My next BJJ Fanatics instructional is all about no-gi chokes, darses, anacondas, guillotines, triangles, and more. It'll include rolling footage and rolling commentary. I hope everyone is as excited as I am. This should highlight the importance of not reaching up for mounts. It separates your arm from your body. Watch this adjustment I do to get a tighter bite on my triangle. I shoot my leg deeper. On all chokes, the bite itself is the most important and crucial aspect of it. The pressure in a choke has to go somewhere, and a good bite ensures it goes to the carotid arteries. I can find lifts and sweeps from weird angles. Having tree trunk legs definitely helps, but it's all about timing and understanding where your opponent's weight is. Their weight has to be somewhere too, and if you understand and can feel it more, sweeps become way easier. Here I have the anaconda available to me, and here I have the darts available to me, and I decide on neither. This is a great example of using mechanics to move someone's arm. With this angle, it'd be very difficult to separate Kai's arm from his body, but look at this angle. Here I can move it in a direction that my arm is strong, even though I give up on it, I think it's a great example. I hop up to knee on belly and then some mount, and then go for my chair sit back take you often see me do in all these videos. I shoot my knee up high by the shoulder, gain upper body control, and then collapse over my shin, bringing Kai all the way to the other side so my bottom hook becomes my top hook. I put him in my body triangle and then just try to squeeze his guts out. Alright, thank you Kai for being on the show, I super appreciate it, and thank you to all my patrons who support the channel, I super appreciate you guys, and if you're still here, please leave a comment or fist bump and I'll see you guys next time.